How many of you are scared of flying? You can raise your hand so I can see. All right. Who is terrified when high above clouds, airplane starts to shake because of turbulences? OK. You'll have to make an exception for me now, just for 10 minutes. I would like, you, I would like, I would like to invite you for a short flight with me. All right. Have you ever heard of gliders? Yes, gliders. Those weird small airplanes without engine that weigh around 500 kilograms. I'm sure you have seen at least one of them during a hot, sunny day in summer soaring in the skies. Have you ever wondered how these machines fly? I mean, hold on a second, this doesn't have an engine, right? How is that supposed to work? To say it briefly, gliders, just like some birds, use thermal columns, or just thermals, which consist of hot air that is rising due to uneven heating of Earth's surface. Those thermals are usually formed below clouds, and the glider pilot's job is to find a nice cloud, start circling below it, and hope for some lift. All right, so you know the basic theory, so I guess we can take off. OK, I can see it from your faces. You want to ask this one question. Why am I your pilot? How can you believe me? OK, let me explain how it all started. Once upon a time, I bought a flight simulator for my PC. It wasn't a particularly wise decision, since those simulators are pretty complicated. They're not just like simple computer games. So after a few days of crashing airplanes, I decided to look to the manual to figure out those flying machines. After some time, I was able to actually fly small airplanes, then some bigger ones, and finally, even a Boeing. Aviation quickly became my passion. It didn't take long to ask this crucial question, and this question was something which completely terrified my parents. Can I become a pilot? And guess what? It took me more than a year to convince them. But finally, I started the course, my glider course. So I learned a lot of theory, I did loads of practice flights, as well as my solo flights. And when I think about being alone, an airplane high above ground, it seems for me like a true state of bliss. However, I also like to think about this from a slightly different perspective. There are some key lessons I learned from flying gliders. Ladies and gentlemen, please make sure you are sitting comfortably because here they come. Number one, plan. Simple? Not really. For a glider pilot, it means observing weather, monitoring winds, predicting position of thermals, all of that requires a lot of work. However, I would like to tell you a story from my life, which I think will explain it better. I always wanted to study abroad to get some experience, and a perfect start would be to find a school somewhere in a foreign country and apply there. However, I found something even better, international scholarship program. So I decided to apply there. I wrote a personal statement, I was invited to interview, then to another one, and finally, they awarded scholarships to schools around the world to a dozen or so people from Poland. I was among them. I got a scholarship to an international school in Vienna, in Austria, and to be honest, it was something I really dreamed about. But it would never have happened if I hadn't planned, if I hadn't researched, if I hadn't been involved in different activities. So I had lots to talk about in school in the interview. And just like a glider pilot has to prepare well before the flight, there was a lot of preparation going on before I applied for a scholarship. However, it is not just enough to simply plan. You also need to predict. And I hope you didn't forget, we sitting here in this glider, we don't have any engine. So yes, a glider pilot has to plan the destination route, but also has to prepare and predict position of thermals whilst he or she is flying. So I also thought incredible how also in our lives we need to predict and look into the future and predict. Sometimes taking decisions, not really being aware of the final outcome. And to be honest with you, I once made a really blind decision. I started to learn Chinese. 
And I'm not even sure when I go to China or have a Chinese friend, but what I know that I'm aiming in the right direction, I'm still doing it since more than two years. And another language is like another arrow in your quiver. It's something that others will simply never have. And I invited you for this flight, you know, because I thought it would go perfectly, seriously, but I think we cannot make our way back to the airport. There is something glider pilots don't really like, and it happens when they cannot find any thermals and they're too far from the airport to come back. Okay, what a glider pilot has to do is to land in a field. And believe me, it's something they don't really like, but sometimes it is a necessity. And I find incredible how sometimes in our lives we also have to, in a way, have a backup plan and sometimes have to land in a field. Because life is not perfect. We all know it. There are some factors which you just can't control. Moreover, I think it's not difficult to be successful when everything is going right. No, when things go wrong, conditions are bad, and everyone around us gave up hope except for us, then we achieve a real success. At this moment, I find it important to tell you the last story, which I think taught me the most. A couple of years ago, my six friends and I took part in a, in a creativity competition. We were supposed to make a short eight-minute play and come up with a creative, man-powered vehicle. So, at this moment, we started to work. We started to work with wood, with angle grinder, you know, this tool that makes loads of sparks? Yeah. And we came up with something that was a combination of a shopping cart, real big shopping cart, and a bicycle. And I have seen, you've never seen anything like that before. Long story short, we were invited to um, competitions. We won two competitions in Poland, and we're invited to the world finals in the United States of America. However, when we arrived to Detroit, we're informed at the airport that everything we made, our props for the, for the eight minute play, as well as our amazing shopping cart, have never crossed the Atlantic. In fact, they were lost somewhere in France. And that's why, because of those factors we cannot control, we also have to always prepare for mistakes. What we have done, that was the crucial point for us, because we decided to rebuild everything we have done during those several months in less than two days. And with an amazing help of other people, we managed to do it. And guess what? We got fourth place in the world. Fourth place with everything made in less than two days. So what have I learned from this? Well, sometimes things go wrong. Sometimes we might fail, but, but it's not our fault. But those are the moments that teach us the most. And just like a glider pilot desperately searching for a field to land safely their machine, also we have to have this backup plan and prepare for mistakes. Okay, right now, I think we have all landed safely. I'd like to remind you those three points, plan, predict, and prepare for mistakes, which, in my opinion, are the key points when we want to plan your future. However, I shared you what I think about this, what I learned from flying gliders, which is a true springboard for me. However, I'm sure there's loads more to explore. Because it is not the goal that matters, whether we achieve it or not, it is the journey that matters. And when I try to think about my future, I try to stay positive, because there's always something new to explore. So remember, never be afraid. Just go ahead and plan your future. Thank you.